Okay, here we have a system of first order differential equations given by the matrix equation y prime is equal to 2, 1, 1, 2 times y. Um, and so what we're going to uh, do is just uh, take a brief second here to rewrite what this actually is. So we have some function y1 of prime and some other function y2 of prime. And that's actually equal to 2, 1, 1, 2 times y1 and y2. So the goal is to figure out what these functions y1 and y2 are. And to do that, there are a number of different ways uh, to, to proceed. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to proceed by solving uh, or diagonalizing this matrix A. So to diagonalize A, let's diagonalize A, um, what we need to find is we need to first find the eigenvalues. And uh, with a little bit of work, what we find are the eigenvalues are equal to 3 and 1. And the corresponding eigenvectors are, uh, for lambda equals 3, uh, the eigenvector is um, 1, 1. And for lambda equals uh, 1, the eigenvector is negative 1, 1. Um, so this allows us to rewrite A as, um, actually, we can also get our P matrix uh, for a diagonalization. Our P matrix is going to be negative 1, 1, and 1, 1. Uh, we can cal calculate P inverse, which uh, saves space I'll write over here. Uh, so just finding the inverse of p, what we can find is that the inverse is 1 half, uh, negative 1, 1, uh, 1, 1. And the diagonal matrix um, is actually equal to uh, just the eigenvalues, which in this case are going to be written as 1, 0, 0, 3. So now, uh, with these matrices, we can then rewrite, now that we've diagonalized a, we can rewrite a as uh, p times the diagonal matrix times p inverse, which helps us because if we look at this, uh, this system here, we have y prime is equal to the matrix A times y. We can now rewrite that as y prime is equal to, instead of having A there, we have p uh, diagonal matrix uh, p inverse uh, times y. And if we let z to be equal to, um, actually just multiplying each side by p inverse on the left, we have p inverse y uh, prime. And the reason we can put the derivative on everything is because remember p inverse is just a matrix of uh, constants. So um, this is no problem to do. And on the right hand side, we have uh, d of the diagonal matrix times p inverse y. Now if we let p inverse y equal z, then what our system becomes is a much simpler diagonal system. z is equal, or z prime, where z is a vector, Z prime is equal to the diagonal matrix 1, 0, 0, 3 times um, Z. And what that means is that the new system that we have to solve for Z is Z1 prime, Z2 prime is equal to uh, 1, 0, 0, 3 um, times Z1, Z2. Which means if we expand this all out, uh, this system actually is just z1 of prime is equal to z1, and z2 prime is equal to 3z2. And these are uh, independent uh, ordinary differential equations of first order that are actually very, very easy to solve. Um, we can actually just inspect this and realize that z1 is equal to some constant, say c1 times e uh, to the t. And z2 is equal to some other constant, e to the 3t. Okay, Because these were decoupled and they were independent differential equations, we were actually able to just solve them independently on their own. Uh, so now that we have z1 and z2, how do we uh, get back what we really wanted, which was what y1 and y2 are? Well, to do that, we realized that um, since we had um, z equal to p inverse y, uh, what that would mean is that p z is equal to y. Just by multiplying both sides of that uh, equation uh, by p. And so this y1 and y2 that we have, or that we want, y1 and y2, so y1 and y2 that we want is actually equal to uh, p, this our p matrix, times z1 and z2, which we know p. p 
p is equal to negative 1, 1, 1, 1. So this becomes negative 1, 1, 1, 1 times our uh, solution z1 and z2, which are c1 e to the t and c2 e to the 3t. And if we go ahead and calculate what that is, uh, what we end up with is y1, y2 are equal to c2 e to the 3t minus c1 e to the t and c1 e to the t plus c2 e to the 3t. And that gives us our solution y1 and y2. So just to summarize, uh, because uh, this matrix A was diagonalizable, uh, we rewrote A as P times some diagonal matrix P inverse. Because we did that, we could actually rewrite the system as a new system, a system um, about the, the solution Z. Um, this system was entirely decoupled, so the differential equations for Z were independent equations, so we could solve them each uh, on their own. Once we had the uh, functions Z1 and Z2, we can turn them back into uh, what they needed to be for y and by just using our p matrix and at the end of the day we end up with our um, our solution uh, y which is what we were after in the first place